Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. So it is always good to have options and in reef keeping there are usually many available to run and maintain a reef tank. For instance, you do have choices when it comes to keeping up with the calcium and alkalinity demands of a reef aquarium, especially one that is SPS dominant. SPS requires some form of calcium and alkalinity supplementation since they have calcium skeletons that demand a lot of these elements to grow and do well in a tank. When I started keeping reef tanks, I kept mostly soft corals and began to experiment with SPS only after achieving success with them. I used a two-part calcium and alkalinity supplement from ESV and it worked great. As I added more SPS, my calcium and alkalinity demands grew, requiring more of the two-part solution. Cost can be a downside when using certain two-part solutions for tanks requiring a lot of calcium and alkalinity supplementation, but some SPS enthusiasts swear by it since it is a ready-made and simple-to-use solution. You will need to calculate the amounts needed and add them manually or via an automated doser such as this one by GHL. A calcium reactor is another popular option. How do they work? Tank water is fed into a chamber that is filled with carbonate media. Carbon dioxide is then injected, causing the media to dissolve. The byproduct of this reaction is a liquid effluent that has a high concentration of calcium and alkalinity, which is dripped back into the sump or tank. The pH of the effluent coming out of a calcium reactor is low, so sometimes it is necessary to boost the pH. One way to do this is to use a caulk reactor. Caulk is short for caulkwasser, a German term for lime water. It is a highly concentrated solution of calcium hydroxide in water with a high pH of 12 plus. It is typically used to augment calcium and maintain high pH levels in reef aquariums. With a caulk reactor, you can place a large amount of caulkwasser in a chamber and run auto top off water through the reactor. This will yield a super saturated solution of caulkwasser that will have a higher pH. The concentration of the solution drifts back into the tank can be regulated with a stirrer or a pump attached to the reactor. The more times the solution is mixed, the higher the concentration of the solution, resulting in a higher pH. Another option to increase the pH when using a calcium reactor is to use a unit with a second chamber. A second chamber can help by removing some of the dissolved CO2 and also increase the calcium carbonate concentration because of the longer contact time with the media. I have had a lot of success using a dual chamber calcium reactor in conjunction with a caulk reactor on my tanks, although I have also achieved great results using two-part, the method I'm currently using for my 187 gallon tank. So which method of calcium and alkalinity supplementation do I prefer? Well, in my experience, using a calcium reactor is pretty much a set it and forget it proposition since the media only has to be replaced every few months. And a large CO2 canister can last even longer. But using a caulk reactor does add to the maintenance, although there are some products out there, such as Brightwell's Boost pH Plus, that can make it easier to elevate pH. With a calcium reactor, you should also dose some additional minor trace elements with a product such as this one from Triton. I do like the precision when dosing two-part and the higher pH, but as I mentioned before, it can be costly if you have a lot of corals, like I do in my 187 gallon tank. So to answer my question, I like both methods, it just depends on the circumstances. No matter which path is taken, it is critical to be diligent and test calcium and alkalinity levels on a regular basis. Calcium in reef aquariums should be kept between 380 and 450 parts per million, while alkalinity should be in the 7 to 11 dKH range. Alkalinity is certainly more important, so I recommend keeping a keen eye on it to keep it stable in order to avoid any large swings and subsequent fading or burnt tips on SPS. My tanks do well between 8 to 9 dKH, so that is my target range. Finally, consider using a device such as GHL's KH Director, which can monitor and even control the amount of alkalinity being added to a tank via a doser or calcium reactor. It produces lab-grade measurements and can generate tests multiple times a day. Well, folks, that will do it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I also want to remind you about my premium SPS frag store on reefthumb.com. I will leave a link in the video description below. I will also leave links for my equipment store. I do sell GHL, Royal Exclusive, and Pax Bellum equipment. Many of these products I do use personally on my tanks. And lastly, if you are interested, I do offer an online reef keeping master class which focuses on SPS dominant reefs. Hey, I really appreciate the view. Until next time, be safe and be well. Later.